Greetings viewers and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic. I don't have a couch yet. This is where I sit. I find it very comforting. But anyway, I'm sorry this video is going to be a bit of a downer, but I think it'll have an optimistic ending. So I have this band-aid on my hand and that's from an IV drip I had put in in the hospital two Saturdays ago. That's not where the story starts. You might remember that when I did the no sugar challenge in November, I mentioned that pain I'd been feeling had disappeared. Well, it came back. And for a number of circumstances beyond my control, I stopped exercising regularly, I lost my support system, I moved to Yosu, and I just felt really helpless and isolated, and my stress level went through the roof. We all know that stress can manifest itself in a number of very painful ways, so naturally, my pain just got worse. But I tried to be positive, and I started exercising regularly again, and I tried to quit sugar again, but I failed because it's really hard. And anyway, eventually it got so bad that I went to a clinic where a doctor gave me a hip shot and prescribed three days of antibiotics for a slight fever that I had. Oh yeah, and he told me that I maybe had this thing called diverticulitis and suggested that I get a CT scan at a bigger hospital. But I went home and I researched diverticulitis and I figured out that it wasn't that bad and I thought maybe I could manage it on my own. So I let another week go by and then the pain wasn't going away and I was getting really worried about it. So I went to a bigger hospital and I requested a CT scan. But the doctor I saw at the bigger hospital wasn't so keen on that diagnosis and he wanted to run all the tests. In this one hospital visit, I had an EKG, a urine test, x-rays, a blood test, a CT scan, and a sonogram. He was very thorough. It always impresses me that you can actually get all these things done in Korea, like, immediately. If I were in Canada, I'd be waiting for a month just to get a CT scan. But these tests took so long that by the time I had finished doing all of them, the doctor was in surgery and he wouldn't be available to give me my results until the afternoon. And when I finally did get my results, all he told me was that I don't have diabetes. That's a big relief. But I do have scoliosis, which if you don't know, is that you have a slight curve in your spine. And that really makes a lot of sense. But it doesn't explain why I have this constant pain here in my side. He scheduled me for a colonoscopy and he was like, you can have it tomorrow. And I was like, wow, that's nuts. But we scheduled it for the Saturday. This was a Wednesday. So that's why I have this band-aid on my hand, because I had the colonoscopy on a Saturday and I'm filming this video on the following Tuesday. Don't worry, I'm fine. The good news is, they didn't find anything. But the bad news is, they didn't find anything. I have to go back to the hospital on Friday to see the doctor again. So when I edit this video later, there will probably be some text in around here somewhere about the results of that visit. So anyway, that's my sad hospital adventure story. I went back and forth on whether I wanted to vlog about it, because on the one hand, I want to keep these videos optimistic and interesting, but on the other hand, I think repressing negative emotions and hiding them from social media is bad. And I saw Inside Out. I know that you can't be joy all the time. Sometimes you just gotta let sadness do its thing. But don't get me wrong, things are definitely looking up. I feel so relieved knowing I don't have diabetes or cancer, um, and I'm slowly building up a support system again here in Yosu, so hey, that's good news, and I'm solving problems by myself like a real adult person, so that's exciting. But I also made this video because being a human is hard, and we all have these expectations from ourselves and from others, and sometimes we just gotta let them go and be okay with that. Like, instead of being productive, I spent the Sunday after my colonoscopy at the movies. And it was glorious. Well, Rampage was glorious. Ready Player One was upsetting. But seriously, if Rampage is still playing in your area, you should totally see it. It's a solid B action movie. 
I'm amazed that it even got made. I'm even more amazed that it got made and I didn't hear anything about it until reviewers started posting reviews on YouTube. And I was like, they made a movie about Rampage? Rampage? That N64 game about monsters destroying cities that my brother and I were always playing because Ocarina of Time didn't exist yet. They made a movie about that? Starring Dwayne Johnson. And I heard nothing about it? My bad, the N64 game is actually the sequel, Rampage 2 World Tour, and the movie is based on the first game, which is an arcade game that was released in 1986, which is an excellent year, by the way. Yeah, it's definitely worth your time and money. Which is a shame, because I feel like more people will go out and see Ready Player One when Rampage is by far the superior movie. Come on, it's got Dwayne Johnson in it, and it's just amazing. And I love the villain in Rampage. She's just so deliciously evil. It's, ugh. And not to mention this amazing government operative who, like, pretends to be a cowboy. It's great. I should stop here. Thank you for all your love and support. I really appreciate it. Stay just short of fantastic.